Awesome. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Hope you guys are having the most incredible day so far. So we have an exciting event coming up in March. So we wanted to come on here live, me and Melissa, and just chat with you guys a little bit. There has been so many insane energies going on right now. So if you're on here live with us, then say hello in the comments. Let us know that you're, you're here with us. And if you guys are catching the replay, thank you so much for being here with us. We're super excited to just have this little chat today and just um, share a little bit more about something that we're very passionate about. And um, like I said, recently, there's been so many energies going through. And I know for me personally, I feel like I'm like crawling out of this cave right now where I'm like, I was like in this deep, dark hole and like really processing a lot and a lot of awareness came in. And for the astrology fans, there's um, Mercury retrograde that's ending today. And the whole thing with that is really putting pressure on ourselves so that we can start uncovering all of the lessons that we need to bring up. And um, so Melissa and I have a workshop coming up in March of all about worthiness called Unmask Her. And this is for the women only, but men, you can feel free to stay on this live as well if you're on here with us. Um, but for this workshop, it is only for the females. Um, but in that, like, I would love to know a question like, for you, like, what does it mean? Like, what is your definition of worthiness? If you want to put that in the comments, that would be awesome. Let me see if I can get back to the screen. Melissa, what's your definition of worthiness? Yeah, I love that. Okay. So I was like, can I come in? Can I come in? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Is it my turn? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I obviously have patience as well. So, um, and I love that question. I love that you asked that. And I'm, I'm interested to hear like a part of your story when you talked about like crawling out. Yeah. Of cave. Because like I, you know me, I love analogies and I find it's very easy for us to uh, process those. We can create like a dialogue, uh, around it because when we are moving through that human experience, it's like, okay. And we talk about like the butterfly and the cocoon. Those are the things that we remember. Cause it's like, oh, I remember being within that experience and what happened as a result. How did I come out of that cocoon? So I love that. But going back to uh, self-worth, it's really about how you value yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's really just working from the inside then out. Cause a lot of us, we believe that our external world is our self-worth. We always attach it to certain um, experiences or certain things. And what happens is we begin to judge ourselves based on what we're seeing. So when we are judge ourselves, we start identifying ourselves as that. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, we believe that we're not worthy enough. We're not smart enough. We can't do this because of all the things that we've been processing and downloading. And mm -hmm. that's why we say it's important to always work from here. Because when you, had, when you work from here and you understand what the roots are, what the themes are playing in your life and you grab the root and you allow it to blossom. That's where you start propelling towards your dreams, towards your goals. And that's where you really start feeling alive again. It's not about trying to do or be someone. It's about being in okay in your okayness. That's yes. what love worth is. Yeah. Becoming okay in your okayness. I love that. And what you said about like the external environment, I know for me personally, that's something that recently I've really came to this massive awareness because I always thought that I was like an ambivert where I'm like kind of like in and out, but I'm really realizing now that I'm more of an extrovert. And I just always, I just wasn't in good energy because I was going through so much stuff energetically that now that I've released so much of it, I'm really stepping into this more extrovert side of myself. And with that being said, being locked up in quarantine, living by myself has been so hard because I've been so lonely and I just crave connection and crave this like outside stuff. So like for me, like I was reaching for these like external validation because it was just what I was used to doing as an extrovert mm -hmm. and understanding now, like I had to, I was forced to go within and what you were sharing about um, all of those kind of like old parts of yourself coming up and that unworthiness. Like I was literally like, in this like this like fog of like only seeing the parts of myself that I didn't like mm -hmm. and I was being so hard on myself mm -hmm. and I share this because it's so human and it happens to all of us and just being in that and then allowing myself to actually go within and process it mm -hmm. obviously reaching out from resources from you and from my network and all of these things but really doing that inner work ourselves and then pushing through because on the other side of those breakdowns are always the most beautiful breakthroughs. And it's like coming out of it on the other side, it's like a constant death and rebirth. Like that's all life is. Yeah. So this whole, like, I just am so fascinated by everything around this, especially just recently just going through that. And literally it was like this morning that I woke up and I was like, 
feeling like myself again. Yeah. And I, and what I love and what I grabbed from all that too, is that you were judging your inadequate, like the inadequate parts oh, of yeah, for how sure. you label it. And remember I say what happens when we judge ourselves, we identify ourselves and what happens, the contraction of energy, it's, it's really disempowering. Mm-hmm. And when we're in that state, it's very difficult for us to crawl out of it unless we move into self-compassion or self-forgiveness. And we yeah. can talk a little bit about that too, because I find that very attractive and that this, like this theme or this, and a lot of people talk about it recently, like self-compassion, what is it? What is self-forgiveness? And the psychology behind it, it really wasn't exposed until 2003. Mm-hmm. Right. We were like, oh, okay. And then what is it really? It's, it's understanding that you still have pain. You have inadequacies, you will fail, but it's also not about criticizing it and for identifying it. It's about coming out and knowing, okay, so I am human within a human experience. Yeah. Right. It's really just the ability to recognize your own humanity or the mm-hmm. fact that each of us are imperfect in each of our imperfect experiences. Yeah. Right. And it's also too like the ability of sense of mindfulness or non-biased awareness of experiences, even if they are painful. Mm-hmm. So that's what the transition is to. It's like, okay, so I, I understand that I'm in this human experience right now. I'm feeling these deep emotions and you don't even feel emotionally charged because then it becomes a theme, right? It's like, I'm constantly feeling angry. I'm constantly feeling sad. That's a theme because you're allowing yourself to feel emotionally charged within that experience. It's like, it's a lot, you're allowed to ride the waves. But yeah. when you're constantly drowning, it's like a boat when you're going down and you're not coming back up and there's no progress. It's, it's a theme of yours. And then the theme be- is usually because of the root of the cause and the root of the cause many times is things that we experience as a child. Right. So going back to self-worth um, and, and I'll move back into self-worth. And the reason why is because when I first talked about I really want to talk about where it comes from. And I talked about the external resources sources, sorry, it's not even just like, it's not just society or media. It's from our parents. Hey, it's not about judging our parents. Cause remember when we judge, we identify, it's really just knowing that they were doing the best they could with what they knew based on their own experience. Mm-hmm. Right. So I know of a woman, I had a incredible session with her and we talked about worthiness and where it came from, like from her parents, from her mom, from her brother and how she identified herself through that. And what happened in one of our sessions together, which was awesome, and she talked about that for her, it meant worthiness meant that she had to work hard, but it also meant that she puts her needs aside, right? So what was happening is that she was constantly working hard. She was feeling exhausted. She felt like she wasn't sustainable. She was running for this, this goal, but she wasn't putting her needs first. So she was listening to the outside world based on what she knew as a child. So right. that, was, that was her sense of worthiness. I also saw in someone else too, is like, when it came to worthiness, it's like, I need to control my environment in order to feel safe. I feel worthy when I feel safe. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I just find it. I'm like getting really deep right now. <laughs> so but, good, it's yeah. all like patterns, like understanding the patterns and recognizing the old patterns. And it's interesting when you can start becoming aware of them because they come up when they're ready to be healed. Yeah. So they come up and then you can identify to where they came from and then you can work through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I love that too. And that's why I always talk about like the importance of self-compassion, the Mm -hmm. importance of self-forgiveness, know that you're a human living in a human experience. And there's so much, obviously in the workshop, we'll go a lot deeper into that in regards to what that looks like and how you come, can, can move through that experience and not judge yourself on it. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of point about that, but do you want to share, and I know you shared a little bit about um, your story and what you've experienced like recently, but, and I'll share parts of myself as too, because I think it's really important because people then can relate, but when it came to you, and I know you talked a little bit about abandonment, you said I could share that, which is you're open to, but that was your worthiness. That's what you felt worthy. And a result, it came into your external world because you weren't working on it internally first, but what happened when you recognized it as a result, what happened when you actually pulled the root out and it became to blossom? Yeah. As soon as you like recognize it, it's, it's funny because like the external world is all there for us. Yeah, it's yeah. always working for us. And it's not until we actually recognize it and see it that we can actually like, be like, oh shoot, I got duped again by the universe. You know, like you got me again, but I see you and I'm on to you and I'm going to do the work now. Mm-hmm. So thank you. <laughs> and then once, once we actually like identify it and we start like asking ourselves the right questions. And like, I know for me, I've been going on a lot of walks outside lately Last night at 1230 at night, um, I literally went outside and just going outside in the fresh air when the stars are out, just allowing my mind to wander on all of these 
topics in my head and I, letting it wander back to where it came from and like correlating it to in the, in the, in the present moment. So that when situations start coming up in the future, mm -hmm. I can then start making changes and aligning it with the person that I am and the person that I want to become. Mm -hmm. So we can start integrating all of these new changes into who we actually are. And like we said, like that awareness is huge and then allowing yourself to wander on it and learn the lessons. And I know we always say this, it's like having a coach, like you can do all of this work on your own. And that's what we're huge about empowering in this workshop. We're going to be teaching you how to do this work on your own. Mm. Because the reality is, is we don't know how to do this on our own unless we're taught. And in the education system, unless your parents like knew about this stuff, but it's all very new stuff. Like we just didn't learn it. So that's a lot where the self-compassion and self-love comes in that we're all doing the very best we can with everything that we're being given mm -hmm. and understanding that all of our past traumas are showing up in our present everyday life as future mm -hmm. fears. Yes. So when we can start understanding that it really helps us to, I know for me personally, it starts allowing myself to become a student of life again and start having that self-love and forgiving myself and not only myself, but forgiving others. And that has been huge too, because before I used to hold grudges, like I would hold grudges on people. And now it's like, you know what? I have the, I have the choice every single day to wake up and I get to forgive myself for anything that I did, but I also have the choice to forgive other people. And then around that, then we can learn how to set boundaries and start creating our kind of environment the way that we want it. So it can be amazing for us to live on the everyday, but it all starts from within. And then it, our inner world creates our external reality. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I love that. Ooh, I felt that. And, and what I love most is you said it actually twice. I, I recognize that you said self-awareness. Mm -hmm. That is the first step to any change because you may be, you may be experiencing this theme in your life and in this pain, but you don't recognize it. That's exactly. the first thing, right? And yeah. the second thing is like, you're moving through this, the theme, and then you recognize it. Yeah. And then the third one is you're moving through this theme, but you're open to learning how to change it. It's literally like separating yourself and being, remember I talk about like opening up the aperture, yeah. right? Opening up to the aperture. And I'll give the analogy because people love analogies. And I shared this with you actually earlier. It's like, it's like looking in your room right now, right? And all you see is the door. That's, that's the first step to awareness. Okay. I see it. And then it's slowly opening up the aperture. That's the second one where I said, it's the theme. And then you see that you need to change it. And then the third one is, okay, now I need to change the behavior. I see the theme. I want to get to the root of the cause. I don't just see the door. I see the window. I see the bed. I see the chair. That's the sense of changing awareness. That's mindfulness. Mm -hmm. That's about working from the inside then out. See, mm -hmm. but if we're only living in this state and people call it tunnel vision, right? Like opening up perspective, I call it open up the aperture. But if you're only seeing stuff in tunnel vision, then how are you going to change the things in which are over here? It's mm -hmm. like, you can't see the frame if you're in the picture. Yeah. Right. So that's what really self-awareness is about. Self-awareness, self-compassion, self-forgiveness, self, 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 self. Mm -hmm. And I, and I also love the fact that you said it is that forgiveness of others. It's not about forgiving what they did to you. It's forgiving yourself on how you're judging yourself because of what they did to you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And it's all like with relationships too. It's like all of these emotions that we experience from within, there are emotions to deal with. Mm -hmm. And we've been taught to like project these emotions. Oh, I feel this way. I feel that way. And I'm like, I'm really learning that a lot of it, you don't need to share. Yeah. Yeah. Like you really don't. It's like, yeah. you just need to learn how to be able to understand what they mean. Yeah. Take the lessons, feel them, transmute them, mm -hmm. and then carry on with your relationships and like not putting it on to other people. And obviously there's nothing that's perfect. You know, like we're all learning and growing. And I know still, I rely on like my network a lot. And sometimes I'm like, Laura, you probably shouldn't have shared as much as you did, but <laughs> you know what? We're human. <laughs> well, I, and I love that. It's like, you're just, and we talked about this too. You're just sharing a part of your voice. Exactly. Like you're, you're just, you're getting, and I talk about the playground and getting curious on the playground. Like, and I know this is you, right? If I can share this, I just love that you're very curious. I'm very curious too. It's like, we're going on the swing because we love to play and then we're going down the slide, right? But yeah. then we're learning. When we went down the slide, we ate shit because we went too fast. <laughs> yeah, we're like, oh. So we're like, oh, that didn't work for us, right? So if you get, if you open up the aperture in your awareness and you get curious on the swings and the slide and you play in the playground with curiosity, you, you see things differently. 
So yeah. for, for your experience, and I'll share more of mine, and I've been sharing a lot of years, for your experience, you just talked about how you're exposing, you're like, okay, maybe it's like about compartmentalizing. I said that wrong. Can you help me with that word? <laughs> now I can even say compartmentalizing. <laughs> yes, there you go. And like processing it and then learning from your voice. So next time you go down the slide, you're not going to eat shit. Mm -hmm. right so it's it's about getting curious and playful on the playground it's like instead of judging yourself and identifying yourself going back to that it's like okay how can I open up the aperture create self-awareness yeah. and get playful even when it feels uncomfortable for me okay yeah. that didn't work for me I ate shit on the slide yeah. right that person that was playing on the swings beside me maybe didn't feel right so I won't play with them again yeah you know what I mean so yeah. that that's uh, that made me that made me giggle <laughs> I love that I just love all the little child analogies too and it's like when you're going down that slide too, I know for me personally, I've really been realizing it's like, if I go down the slide and I eat shit, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, what is everybody else thinking? But then I'm like, and I keep catching myself. I'm like, you know what, what their process is inside their mind and their body of how they're processing yeah. me on this slide. It really doesn't have anything to do with me. It has everything to do with them and their internal process. So whether they can or can't process it, like that has nothing to do with me. Yeah. So it's like yeah. literally all of it, it just comes down to us having that awareness within ourselves and just understanding this and Carolyn says love that going down the slide and eat shit <laughs> and sometimes it happens more than once I've been finding lately yeah. too that I feel so slow sometimes sometimes it takes me multiple multiple times of doing the same thing over and over again before mm -hmm. I learn it and that's yeah. the cool thing about the universe is that it never gives up on us it's yeah. like don't worry Laura it's okay we'll give it to you again and then next time hopefully you'll learn Oh, don't worry, Laura. Like, we'll just do it one more time until you actually get it. It just keeps saying that it's like, oh, you're doing great, but we're going to keep showing you this yeah. until you finally have that expanded awareness. Yeah. And I love that. It's like, and, and if I go back to the playground eating shit, it's like, you didn't learn enough from the pain. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If you kept eating shit, but you weren't learning that it was hurting you. So you mm -hmm. continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. We see that in our relationships. Yeah. The more relationships where they feel heavy, they're not really serving us. We continue to live in them. Yeah. either feelings of we're not good enough or maybe we, we don't have self-confidence or we believe that we need them in order to be this but yeah. we haven't been in enough pain mm -hmm. in order to leave or maybe we're maybe sometimes for some people is that we're in so much pain that we're scared to leave yeah I, I can relate to that because when I was in it I knew I was in it but I wasn't ready to leave yet it was like a, it was like I was comfortable being so in so uncomfortable yeah. And I don't know if maybe you have any awareness as to why this happens to us. Why, when we get into these states, is it that we just love feeling like a victim so much? It's like, you just give up and you're like, okay, staying in this state where you're aware, but you're not quite ready to, to get out of it quite yet. Yeah. So, um, I know there's, uh, his name's Michael. I forget his second name. He talks about the four states of consciousness. And the first one is actually the victim mode. I'll have to actually put his name underneath. It was really interesting. I have it in my book and he talks about the different stages that we're in, but the number one is victim. So he said about 80% of us actually live in victim mode. And the second one is the consciousness where you say you're opening up the aperture. But he said, the reason why we live there is because we don't know what we don't know. It's, it's like we get comfortable being in there and we, and we can move into the ego too, is because the ego wants to keep us safe. And remember yeah, yeah. I use the analogy. It's like the ego's on the stage, always taking credit for ourselves. And our, the essence is actually sitting in the audience, eating the popcorn, watching it, but mm -hmm. it feels difficult for us to feel into our essence and actually be okay in our okayness because of our past conditionings, because of the themes that we are playing in our lives. But mm -hmm. I would say, yeah, about 80% of people live in the victim mode because of, of lack of consciousness and lack mm -hmm. of self-awareness. Yeah. But and, and and every human being is completely different in regards to how they move through that, right? There's very common themes, of course, but it's it's difficult for people to get out of that. I know for me in my experience, I'll share mine, is I was in a very heavy relationship. I'm not gonna label it as anything, but it was very heavy for seven years. It was my past relationship. And I always knew inside me, and some people just have this inner knowing. Some people don't. I just knew inside me intuitively that I was meant for so much more. I knew that as a child, I've always had like a voice, but I didn't know how to express it because I was scared, mm -hmm. right? I was in this relationship where they told me that I wasn't pretty, that I wasn't good enough without them, that I will never be successful without them, that no one's going to love me. And what happened is those thoughts became my own. Yeah. So remember I talked about like actually seeing your thoughts outside of yourself and being able to process them differently. These thoughts became my own. Mm -hmm. So obviously our thoughts move into our emotions, our emotions move into our unconscious programming. A lot of us are an autopilot as a result. 
So I'm just moving through the emotions and the thoughts of I'm not good enough. So if you're living like that every single day, your victim mode is I'm not good enough. No one's going to love me. I stay in this relationship because that's my only sense of safety Mm -hmm. is outside there. I don't feel safe. Yeah. More people are going to hurt me. More people are going to tell me I'm not enough. So why not just stay in this relationship right now where he just tells me I'm not enough instead of actually exposing myself to someone else. Oh, wow. I felt that. (laughs) so much right especially with everything going on right now you mentioned the safety because I think because especially with everything going on in the external world right now honestly like being internal is almost safety but then when I got into that state of of judging myself and comparing myself and all of these things it became another level of comfort that I could sit in because the outside world was scary this was scary but it was safe And it's like, I just stayed in it. You know what I mean? Because it was like either this or that. And I chose this because I didn't want to deal with that. Okay. Love this. Cause we, that's where self-sabotage comes up, right? hundred percent. Yeah. So what just moved through me when you said that is my experience too, is I'll reject me before they can reject. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what I was doing. (laughs) hundred percent. And I'm like, why am I like this? Right. It's like, I will judge me before they can judge me. I, I'm actually going to post an entire post. Oh around. man. You just like hit it on the head. That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> right. So that, that is a common theme in self-sabotage. It's like, I, and I see it in a lot of people and it's very different. Rejection, reject me before they can is very common, but there's obviously common themes based on childhood, but it's like, I will keep myself safe. I will hurt me. So they don't have to hurt me. And that's yeah. the common one is self-sabotage and judgment. Yeah. for sure yeah that that's that's exactly what I was going through the last few weeks 100 yeah. percent. so we're working through it guys that's it's just proof like you know it's like everybody's human everybody's yeah. human everybody's always working on things and I think the biggest thing it comes down to just like loving everybody as is yeah. loving everybody through all of it whether they're sharing it whether they're not like I was listening to a live the other day and he was um guy was just saying like every interaction you have with somebody, you should be leaving them brighter than you found them. Mm. And I was just like that. If everybody could just live off of that. Yeah. Like how awesome would that be? It would literally just be like this big, beautiful ripple effect of like yeah. everything just getting brighter. Yeah. And, and I just, I just want to like honor you because you said recently you've been, you moving through um, the storm and I just want to mm-hmm. honor you for just coming out of it and allowing you. yourself to like kind of process it in a way that really aligns with you is, and cause that's a skill. Yeah. Thank like you. That's a skill based on all of the work that you have done. And same with me. Like I am, I am human in a human experience. I go through just before this call, I said to you, I'm like, I just got a, off a coaching call and my body is tired. And you know, I yawned, I stretched, I embraced yeah. feeling tired. Yeah. Right. So it's just like, Hey, we all go through these human emotions and just cause I'm tired doesn't mean I'm not going to show up and serve other people. Cause I always think service first because I take myself mm-hmm. out of it. And when I serve them, I feel good, Mm -hmm. but I don't take myself out of it entirely. I obviously give myself self-care my son's screaming, but I think it's important to stop making it about me when I want to serve other people because serving other people actually always stems back from me because I feel good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like finding that balance too, right? It's, it's interesting. Like the whole coaching world and just getting into it. It's so interesting Yeah. as we go through things in our own personal life, plus also having clients that we show up for and hold Mm -hmm. space for them to be able to do it it's been really interesting stepping into that more. And like, I've been doing it in strides because it's like, I I don't want to take on too many because I also have to deal with my stuff and then I have to show up with for them. And it's like this big, like juggle. And I'm like, always like for you, like having kids and like doing your coaching and doing your own personal work. It's like, it's incredible. Honestly, Melissa, it's so inspiring to watch because it, it's just like, we have such resilience within all of us. Yeah. And we, within our environment, it's not to judge what you're going through and I'm going through because it's all just the same human emotion that we're all experiencing, but it's just really inspiring to have other people that are going through it and to go first and yeah. allow me to watch and learn from somebody like you. It literally is. It just lights me up so much. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. It's heavy at times, but I moved through it. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, um, do you want to share the end? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Lisa. Hi, Gregor. Hi, Carolyn. So excited you guys are all on here with us. I'm so glad that this is resonating. Um, so just to finish this off, everybody, we just wanted to share that we have an incredible workshop coming up 
um, talking more about all of the worthiness and really diving deep into the past emotional coding so that you can start uncovering some of these patterns that have been holding you back. And um, Melissa's incredible with it, obviously, from what you've heard on this too. And she's helped me so much dig through this stuff, but we're really going to be digging in to help you to uncover those patterns, to be able to break through in those areas, and then also to be able to anchor in the confidence, the action steps, so that you can move forward in where you currently are in life. And that workshop is going to be on March 7th. So this is only for women, this workshop. It's called Unmask Her. And I'll put the um, information in the comments there. So if you do want information on it, but it's um, $444, the four hour workshop. It is going to be absolutely incredible. Yeah. And um, we would absolutely love to have you there. So if anything on here resonated and you do want to join, then just feel free to um, click on that link. Or if you have any questions, then just reach out to Melissa and I, and we can give yeah. you more information on it all. Yeah, I love that. And I add, I will add one more thing, obviously, uh, aside from diving into the emotional coding, we will um, guide you through that where you're not feeling emotionally charged. So some things will obviously move through you, but you have two incredible coaches and seven other women, because it's eight in total, really on the same self-discovery journey as you. So you're not alone. Um, everyone will be moving through the emotions that all I ask from all of you that are really open to diving in is just to come in 100% ready to play full out. Cause mm -hmm. if you're willing to play full out, then that's where like all of the magic will come out. And, and lastly, uh, my partner who's incredible, um, he'll be also sketching a superhero of you. That's why I called on mask her of your desired superhero. So that's entirely up to you. So not only do you get the workshop where you actually will walk out knowing what worthiness means to you and where it stemmed from what the root of the cause was as you'll actually walk out uh with a desired superhero that will look like you of your choice so yeah can't wait to see it i'm like matt make me look really sexy <laughs> you are really sexy laura <laughs> thank you <laughs> amazing well thank you so much for being on here live melissa i'm really excited for the workshop it's going to be so good so Thank you everybody who's been on this live with us. We all, we love you so much and appreciate you. And we're just so proud of you for like literally going through these waves, ups and downs and just coming through them on the other side. And also, I just want to mention one more thing with this workshop is like these heavy emotions, like Melissa said, sometimes they can be scary and we don't want to sit in them. And that's one of the most powerful things, like Melissa said, is we're going to help you move through them. Yes. And I really want to emphasize that because once you know how to move through them on your own, mm -hmm. it's going to be a game changer. And you're going to start to be able to sh shift through them on your own time a lot quicker. So you're going to be start living in this higher frequency emotions more often than you will be in the lower ones. So it's really a skill that you learn. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Well, everybody enjoy your Saturday. Have an awesome weekend. The beautiful day here out in Ottawa. So I'm going to go outside and get some uh, fresh air, but um, we love you so much. And uh, we will chat with you guys very soon. And I'll put the link in the comments. Mwah. Bye everybody.